In our previous lecture, we learned how to use and understand NS timers to create a counting timer. In this lecture, we're going to be using NS timers again, but in a different fashion. We're going to be using them to display information, and what we can do, the information we're basically displaying is the current time and date set to our user's location. Now, how we're going to do this is just like how we use our NS timers, we're going to set the timer to keep repeating itself so it keeps updating our two labels, which will display, well, label one, our time, and label two, our date. So to do this, we need to add in our two labels. So we're gonna simply add one in, space it out there, and I'll put it nice and centered. And I'll just copy and paste it, so I've got two. I've made them big enough so you can clearly see the different ones displaying. And then what we're gonna do is bring up our assistant editor, making sure it's selected on our view controller.h. And just after our UI view controller, we create our parentheses brackets there to add in our variable of our NS timer. And we simply go space, asterisk, and simply name it timer, and that will be semicolon. Okay, so we've got our NS timer in, we've called it timer. Now we're going to create the two outlets for these labels. So this one is going to be our time label, add that in. And this one is going to be our date label and then add that one in so we've got the two outlets on there so we can display our time and data within these labels so we can now jump into our view controller.m where we can now code it so in our previous lecture we triggered our ns timer uh, with a button but what we're going to do in this one is different we're going to trigger our ns timer as soon as the view loads so as soon as it loads our time and date will be displaying and updating um, every um, however long we set it to or every second um, to the update our labels to keep us in time and with the date so within the view did load we're just going to space it out and we're going to create our ns timer formatted so the name of our timer which is timer space equals space and then we're going to do bracket ns timer space scheduled timer with time interval. We need the one with the target selector and user info and repeat. In the first highlighted section, we're going to put how often we want it to update. Now, as we've got a time and date, the date will only really update every 24 hours. It's more for the fact of our time. Now, our time is going to be displaying the seconds also. So we obviously want that to update every second. So we do 1.0. In the target, we're going to set that to self. In the selector, we do at selector. And we'll come back to this highlight section in just a moment. And then in the uh, user info, we do nil. And repeat, we want yes, as we want it to keep updating itself so we get the correct time. Now, just under the view did load, I'm just going to space this out here. We're going to create a void statement. Now, the void statement is what's going to be displaying our information in it. So every second, this void statement will be updated. So you do dash bracket void bracket there, and I simply name it update uh, timer and create our parentheses brackets there. And then back into our selector, we're going to select this to update timer. The void statement we just created, so it knows it's this one it's updating. So in this void statement, we're going to trigger our labels to display the time and date. And obviously, as it keeps getting updated, it's going to refresh our labels and display the new time and date. So how we do this then is our, we're going to type in our NS uh, date formatter. There we go. Space asterisk, and I simply name this formatter, nice and simple. Space equals space are two brackets. It's going to be our NS date formatter again. We need to allocate it with a bracket there, and then we do space in it. So we've located our NS uh, date formatter. We can now use it within this sentence. So we do bracket, and the name of what we shorted it down to, which is formatter, space um, set uh, date uh, format. So we need a top one there to our string. So we do at symbol two quotation marks, and then have a bracket and a semicolon. Now, whatever we place within these two quotation marks is the format in which it's going to display. So as we want this one to display our time, we do hour, hour, colon, minute, minute, colon, second, second, colon. So that's how you display the time. 
So you could do to have it uh, just hour, hour, minute, minute, or maybe you could just want it minute, minute, and seconds. It's entirely up to you how you want to display the time. But it reads that from the set date format, from the format of the date, and it says, okay, this is a time format, so it would display the time in how we set it. And then once you've done that, we then need to display that within our label. So we do self dot uh, time label is what we're using dot text as we change in the attribute of our text in our label. The space equals space a bracket our formatter string from date, which is the top, uh, bottom one here. Sorry, and in the highlighted section here, we do our bracket ns date space date at the top there and that with our two brackets and our semicolon. Now we'll do our um, date one in just a moment, but we're gonna test and make sure this is working. So we go to build and run. And as you can see there, as soon as it loads up, it displays it now into our first label with the correct time as you can see. And it's updating every second, so our seconds now start to climb. Okay, so we've got that, and now we're ready to place in um, the ability to do our date. So what we're gonna do is copy this and just paste it underneath. Now there's a few things we need to change. Now the thing we need to change the most is our formatter. So what we could simply do is call this formatter2. So if we change this formatter2 in these both of these three lines so it reads a different uh, NS date formatter. And then what we need to do is also change the label it's reading it to. So instead of our time, this will be our date label and the format it's reading within our NS string. Here. So what we need to do now is in capitals y y y y dash m m dash and a little d d. Okay, so that is the date format. So you can rearrange these however you like. It reads the four y's as the year, which would display the year, the two m's as the month, and the two d's as the date. Now it's not going to place this in our previous label or read any data from our previous label because we changed the name of the formatter. That's just a simple format at two. We changed the format it's reading the date to basically date instead of time, and we've changed the label it's gonna place it in. So we've got our date label, and it's gonna place that in with the format at two, which again is linked back up to our date format. So then when we go to build and run this, you can now see as well as the time increasing, we now have our current date being displayed and updated every second. Now, updating every second doesn't really matter for the date, as it only updates every 24 hours, but for having the time in our application, it needs to be updating every second to keep our users up to date. So this is a brilliant way and how we can take NS timers and display useful information such as time and date. It's a nice, brilliant thing to add in your applications to keep your users basically up to date and feel like you know they're not just in a application, but they're getting other information from external sources and be able to like tell the time or even the date just simply from your application by having a quick glance at somewhere on the screen. So this is a brilliant example of NS timers and we talk about NS timers more in depth when we go on to create small little games further on in the course.